All right, so Apple's 2025K iMac is here, and I fully believe that it's the very last Intel iMac update ever, and it's going out with a bang. It's an absolute powerhouse of a machine, but it also now has more upgrade options than ever before, making it tough to figure out which model and which upgrades to buy for your specific use case. And since you guys appreciate the buyer's guides that I've made in the past, I'm gonna do it again. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the eight mistakes you should avoid when purchasing your 2020 iMac. And then I'm gonna break down which upgrades you should buy for different use cases, like for casual users, photo editors, programmers, Logic Pro users, gamers, video editors, and more. But before we begin, I wanna mention that we've already ordered two of these 2025K iMacs. So if you wanna see us do a bunch of testing, subscribe right now, and be sure to check out our new Apple product pattern face mask down below. The first mistake you should avoid is buying the nano texture glass option for $500. Yes, it's probably the best way to get a matte display without using a film that ruins the colors and contrast, but for $500, unless you sit right next to a huge window, it's definitely not worth it. The nano texture glass actually does reduce display sharpness, not as much as other matte displays, but it still does. And the iMac is already so bright that most reflections aren't really an issue. So keep that $500 for something else. On to mistake number two, absolutely do not buy the 21 and a half inch iMac for three reasons. First off, it hasn't been upgraded at all, except for coming with an SSD at the base price. Second, you can't upgrade the RAM yourself like you can do in the 5K model. And third, we're expecting this smaller iMac to get replaced with a new 24-inch Apple Silicon Mac either at the end of this year or in the first quarter of 2021. For mistake number three, do not pay for Apple's memory upgrades. Simply leave it at the 8 gig option, even if you get a fully specced out iMac. And that's because Apple greatly overcharges for RAM, and you can actually buy RAM yourself from Amazon using our links down below in the description. So you can save up to $2,100 on 128 gigs of RAM and it doesn't void your warranty. And if you're not sure about how to do it, it's incredibly easy and we already created a three minute long RAM upgrade tutorial video that I'll link to after this video is over. So definitely check that out. For mistake number four, you need to realize that on Apple's 5K iMac listing page, they have three different option pages and not all all of the available upgrades are visible on each page. For example, if you click on the $1,800 model, you won't have the option to upgrade the CPU or the graphics, but on the $2,300 model, you can even configure the brand new 10-core CPU and you have access to three graphics options that are only available from that page. So be sure to check all of them out. And that actually brings us into mistake number five. If you really want the new 10-core CPU and you don't really care about graphics, you need to realize that you can actually select the middle $2,000 model and pay $500 for that CPU upgrade for a total price of $2,500. If you would have chosen the highest end model and upgraded to that same 10 core CPU, your total would be at $2,700. So you need to realize that you can save money this way because you're not forced into getting better graphics if you don't need it. Now mistake number six is actually the complete opposite. This mistake is overspending on upgrades you don't really need. We believe that there's only a small number of people who the 10 core CPU is actually worth it for. And I'll talk about it in just a minute in the buyer's guide portion. So in reality, most people should be fine with either the six core or the eight core CPU. And the same thing goes for the graphics. There are some people who really won't benefit at all from upgrading graphics. For mistake number seven, don't accidentally miss out on the 10 gigabit ethernet upgrade option for only $100. This one could be very important because if you don't get it right away, you won't be able to upgrade it yourself in the future. And because this new 5K iMac does not have Wi-Fi 6, anybody who has 
or might potentially get fiber internet in the future should definitely pay for this 10 gigabit ethernet upgrade. And the same thing goes for anyone who wants to use a NAS server in the future, since you need 10 gig ethernet for the fastest transfer speeds. And even if you don't fit into one of those categories, it might make sense to still pay $100 for this upgrade because it'll help the resale value of your iMac in the future when you decide to sell it, since there may be people who really want the 10 gig ethernet port. And finally, if you wanna avoid mistake number eight, then be wise about how much storage you buy because it's not user upgradable. With the base model, you're stuck with only 256 gigs of storage. So if you want more, you'll have to choose the $2,000 model, which gives you 512 gigs of storage and some extra options. I personally think that the one terabyte SSD option makes a ton of sense for a lot of people. But on the other hand, if you're getting the higher end model, don't go out and upgrade to eight terabytes of storage because that's simply insane and way more than most people need and you're literally paying more for that upgrade than the entire iMac itself. So now that we've dealt with all of those purchasing mistakes, let's get right into the buyer's guide portion of this video. If you're more of a casual user who wants a 27 inch iMac for things like web browsing or using web-based apps like Microsoft Office and things like that, then the base $1,800 model could actually be a great choice for you. But keep in mind that it's limited to a 256 gig SSD. So you may want to go for the $2,000 model for more storage and the small boost in processor performance. Now, if you're wanting to do some photo editing, but it's more of a hobby instead of professional work, the $2,000 model should honestly be a great choice for you. And we recommend getting a one terabyte SSD and then buying a 32 gigabyte RAM kit from Amazon using the link below and adding it to the existing RAM that comes with the iMac for a total of 40 gigs of RAM, which is more than enough for your use case. Now, if you're a high-end photo editor that takes your work very seriously, then you should definitely get the $2,300 model with the eight core CPU. Absolutely do not upgrade the graphics from the standard 5500 XT because it really doesn't help photo editing. And it's definitely not worth the extra cash to upgrade unless you also do graphics intensive work or gaming. And honestly, we don't think the 10 core CPU is worth it for 99% of photo editors because it's pretty expensive at $400 and we don't think it'll make a big enough performance difference to justify the price. Now, RAM, on the other hand, is very important for photo editing, so we'd recommend getting at least 64 gigs from Amazon. Moving on to programming, a beginner or casual programmer should probably be fine with a $2,000 5K iMac, just be sure to get at least a 32 gigabyte kit of RAM. Now for a high-end professional programmer, the 10 core CPU might actually make sense if you're dealing with very large projects that take a long time to compile. And we definitely recommend at least 64 gigs of RAM and absolutely don't upgrade the graphics. For a Logic Pro 10 user, I honestly think the eight core CPU will be good enough for 99% of users. So only the people doing massive audio projects should go for the 10 core. And for that, it might actually make sense to go all the way up to 128 gigs of RAM. And also, keep in mind that graphics won't do anything for music production at all. Now, if you're a gamer, especially if you wanna use Bootcamp, the very first upgrade you need to make is go for the 5700 XT graphics card upgrade before anything else, because this is currently our favorite AMD card available and the one we use for our eGPU setups. And as far as how much RAM you should buy, a 32 gig kit should be more than good enough for gaming. And since recent games like Call of Duty Warzone take a massive amount of storage, I'd recommend bootcamp users to get at least one terabyte of storage or maybe even two terabytes so you can split it up and give one terabyte for the Mac and one terabyte for Windows in bootcamp. Now, if you're wanting to do virtual machine work, we recommend as much RAM as possible so you could split it up into different VMs and then the 10 core CPU might actually make sense as well and definitely be sure to get as much storage as you think you'll need. Now moving on to video editing, if you're working with 1080p clips or fairly simple 4K editing without using a lot of extra effects or LUTs, then the $2,000 iMac 
will actually get the job done decently well with a 6-core CPU and Radeon Pro 5300 graphics card. You should probably get a 32GB RAM kit below and add it to the existing 8 gigs for a total of 40, which is more than good enough. And be sure to get at least a 1TB SSD if you're not planning to use external storage. And since every 2025K iMac comes with a T2 chip, you should be able to edit HEVC footage pretty well. But if you're planning on taking video editing more seriously in the future, you might want to future-proof your iMac by going for the $2300 model. Now for high-end video editing, the most important thing is the graphics, so we recommend going straight for the 5700 XT, which will be a great match for the 8-core CPU on the $2300 model. We honestly believe that the 10-core CPU isn't worth it for video editing, since it only gives you around a 17% raw performance boost in terms of Geekbench 5 multi-core scores, and that's without factoring in cooling limitations. We think the only people who should upgrade to the 10-core CPU are those who constantly work with raw footage, like 4K or 8K raw. And as for the RAM, 64 gigs should be more than good enough for video editing, and you should probably get at least a 1TB SSD. And don't forget about that 10 gigabit Ethernet upgrade if you think you might be connecting to a RAID storage server in the future. So there you guys have it. That's my buyer's guide for the 2025K iMac. So be sure to use those RAM links down below to save a ton of money on RAM. And you can find the three minute RAM upgrade guide right up there and click the circle above to subscribe. And if this video helped you out, consider buying some of our merch like our mask down below as a way of saying thank you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.